today I am flying Air Asia, the world's best low-cost airline, at least according to Skytrax. The journey will take us from Bangkok Don Muang to Vientiane, the capital of Laos. Now Skytrax isn't the most reliable or independent airline ranking tool. While AirAsia keeps winning awards, their reputation among passengers is quite mixed. And that is why we need to review them like any other low-cost airline. And in this context, I believe that only three things really matter. Cost, reliability and punctuality. As a consequence, AirAsia has to excel in all three in order to be the best low-cost airline on the planet. So do they? Well, there is only one way to find out. Good morning and welcome to Bangkok. I am currently traveling by Grab Taxi from the city center to Don Muang Airport. This took about half an hour and cost $14, including the toll fare for the expressway. You can also travel to Don Muang Airport by train using the SRT Dark Red Line from the new Bang Sui station. This will be much cheaper, but it will take over an hour depending on where you are in Bangkok. Now, before we get to the airport, I wanted to be transparent and explain my history with AirAsia. Because during my research, I came across a lot of negative AirAsia reviews. And a lot of people seem to hold a grudge against the airline, mostly because of one bad personal experience. So prior to making this video, I had flown AirAsia seven times and I never had a bad experience. I also had to deal with their customer service when they cancelled one of my flights back in 2020. They issued a flight credit within three days and I used that on a later journey. Better still, that flight credit had no expiry date, which was very helpful in the context of 2020. So yeah, my previous experiences with AirAsia were overwhelmingly positive. And that is why my expectations for them were quite high on this journey to Laos. So, did they fulfill them? Well, let's head to the airport and find out. Right then, welcome to Don Muang or DMK Airport. Bangkok has two main airports, Suvarnapum and Don Muang. The latter is located in the northern part of the city, while Suvarnapum is situated east of downtown Bangkok. Don Muang is the smaller and older of the two and today mostly serves low-cost airlines. The airport has a pretty fascinating history as it is the oldest continuously operating airport in all of Asia. Don Muang started life as an air force base in 1914 and became Bangkok's main commercial airport after World War II. It remained Thailand's gateway to the world until 2006 when Suvarnapum opened. Don Muang was then shut down for renovation, but it reopened just one year later. It has since evolved into Thailand's main low-cost hub with airlines like AirAsia, Nok Air and Thai Lion Air using it as their primary base. AirAsia has plenty of counters at Don Muang and I like the fact that you can drop your baggage at any of those, no matter which flight you're on. As I had done my online check-in, I just needed to drop my luggage, which took about 10 minutes. In case you're wondering, AirAsia doesn't actually charge money for airport check-in, like many European low-cost airlines. There are a few exceptions though, such as flights departing from Malaysia, Brunei and Hong Kong, where you'll have to pay extra, so better double check. My flight today is FD 1040, departing Bangkok at 1.05 pm and arriving in Vientiane at 2.15. Flight time will be 1 hour and 10 minutes. Security and passport control were quick and I now had some time to check out Don Muang's departure zone. And I have to say that I am quite fond of this airport. There are plenty of well-priced restaurants, both Asian and Western, as well as shops and seating areas. Yes, the airport is a bit old and not as fancy as Suvarnapum, 
but it is also much less crowded. As we are waiting at the gate, let's talk a bit about the airline we're flying today. AirAsia is originally from Malaysia and they have been operating since 1996. Today the airline has 255 planes and is the undisputed king of the Asian low-cost market. The airline has also branched out and created subsidiaries like Thai Air Asia, Philippines Air Asia and Air Asia X. But the company's expansion hasn't been without challenges. During the pandemic, AirAsia had to terminate dozens of routes to China, Japan and other countries. And many of these still haven't resumed. And just like in Europe, the Asian low-cost market has become a lot more competitive in recent years. Various Thai, Vietnamese, Japanese and Korean low-cost airlines now compete for the same passengers on the same routes. But AirAsia has always been the champion of Skytrax Awards, winning world's best low-cost airline a staggering 13 years in a row. I'll share my own opinion on whether I believe that this award is still justified at the end of this video. And here is our plane, a 10-year-old Airbus A320. It arrived around 50 minutes before it was scheduled to depart again. As we are waiting to board, let's talk about AirAsia's baggage policy. I read a lot of complaints online, but if you're used to European low-cost airlines, AirAsia's policy is actually quite generous. You get one regular cabin bag and a small personal item for free. These are not included on Ryanair or Wizz Air, for example. The size and weight restrictions are clearly stated on the website, so don't blame the airline if you show up with too much luggage. Anyways, I had bought one of AirAsia's add-on packages, which included a 20kg checked bag, a meal and seat reservation. I'll share the price later. First, let's get on board. Boarding started around half an hour before departure and the process was efficient. AirAsia boards by zone and in this instance, they managed to get all the passengers on board in about 20 minutes. This A320 has 180 seats in a 3 plus 3 configuration. The first five rows are so-called hot seats, which have exactly one inch more pitch than the rest of the plane. These obviously cost extra and you'll get to board the plane first. I am sitting in 10 Alpha today, a window seat in the front section of the plane. So, what are the seats like? As you would expect, they aren't the most comfortable and the legroom isn't great. But at the end of the day, they are just standard low-cost seats. Okay for a few hours, but nothing more. On the plus side, the plane was spotlessly clean. Boarding was completed in a matter of minutes and we were soon taxiing out to the runway. We departed on time and were now heading north toward Vientiane. One of the best things about AirAsia is that they offer a really decent selection of food on any given flight. The prices you see here are the onboard prices, but if you pre-order a meal online, you'll pay less. As I had purchased an add-on package, one hot meal and a bottle of water were included. I went for AirAsia's legendary Uncle Chin's chicken rice and it was delicious. The portions are small but the quality is good, better than what you get on a lot of full service carriers. I also went to check out the loo which was in a pretty bad state, quite surprising considering that the rest of the plane was clean. 
On a positive note, I always found the cabin crew on Air Asia super friendly and professional. And this flight was no exception. The rest of the journey flew by and we were soon approaching Vientiane. We landed at 10 past 2, 5 minutes ahead of schedule. According to their own website, an average of 83% of all AirAsia flights are on time, which is not bad at all. As we are looking at some pretty cool Lao Airlines planes, let's get to the conclusions. I think that AirAsia is a really solid low-cost airline. This was my 8th time flying them, and just like on the previous 7 occasions, everything was satisfactory. This is a low-cost airline, so don't expect Emirates levels of comfort. And yeah, I wouldn't really want to spend 5 hours on them, but for short flights, I think that AirAsia is a really good option. Are they the best low-cost airline on the planet? Well, that is up for debate. So how much did I pay for this journey? Well, the total price was $92 and that included an add-on package with 20 kilos of checked luggage, a meal and seat reservation. Not super cheap, but good value considering that it was $40 less than the two other airlines flying this route. I also think that AirAsia's add-on fees are quite reasonable compared to other budget airlines. So yeah, well done AirAsia, 8 out of 10. Some of you guys have been asking how I actually mark airlines, so here are my criteria for low-cost carriers. Now, I would love to know, what is your opinion? Do you think that the bad reviews are justified? Or do you agree with my assessment? Please share your stories in the comments down below. As always, thanks very much for watching and see you again next week. Goodbye.